This is the Hello World Podcast. There were a lot of thoughts in my head when you were talking about uh, the, the, the those realizations. One would be, while you used it, used it as an answer to the mistakes or big mistakes earlier, I believe it's the natural course of any startup or any business. You create customers first and you become op- operational on your focus. Then later on, somebody just realizes that we have to look long-term and that any business, especially what you have, really depends on people, on your space makers. But congratulations, Nick and yeah. Carlos, that you realized this early on because uh, I would have clients who would request for assistance on culture development, culture codification, and even culture transformation, even decades after they uh, started. So, And this is the thing about culture. Um, whether you do something or not, culture will happen. Culture will evolve. Right at a certain right. point, and perhaps you did not do it intentionally. So what I like about what you, you and your partner did, Nick, three years when you started it, you realized that uh, you have to focus on these two important things, and that's where my second yeah. uh, insight came in. You're playing by your strengths, and uh, Carlos is strong on the day to day, the here mm-hmm. and now, the servicing customers. That's where his strength is. And I believe uh, you said you're not an HR practitioner, but your heart is really on that side of the business, which should focus on if you want this to be long term, then the space makers, which is why I also love that you have a specific term to your employees. Well, the same way that Disney would call their employees cast members, you're not just employees, right. you're part of the cast, right? The same way that uh, Starbucks will call their baristas uh, or anybody who works there a partner, right? So you know, putting yeah. them at that uh, same level. You have the space makers. And yes, uh, admirable that this early, um, you are recognizing the value of culture and people. And you said that this focus just happened right before the pandemic. Okay? What were other pivots that you had to do? Because of this, uh, this unexpected, unprecedented uh, COVID crisis. Well, obviously, the, the adopting the work from home was was a major one that we had to kind of pivot and figure out. Luckily, we were able to do that in a, in a smooth way. But I think the two major pivots was really driving our, I guess, our marketing and sales initiatives more towards B two B. As the pandemic hit. A lot of businesses obviously had to downsize, unfortunately, or they had to adjust their office spaces, right? Um, And I think a lot of companies were going through that. And so we were seeing so many inquiries regarding these things. Um, And these were large, large requests. And so that's really been a big pivot for us. How to uh, focusing energy on uh, on servicing these bigger companies, um, because with the bigger companies, obviously comes a different service level agreement. As compared to the you know the customers, because these some of these items are, if it's documents for an accounting firm or a law firm, they could be you know very very important for them. Um, so that was something that we had to kind of pivot and figure out and and really work with legal to kind of you know how do we deal with these guys. Um, but the other one was interestingly enough was we started seeing an increase in uh, how do you say it? I guess requests to see their space. We started seeing people who had badminton courts or hotel rooms and, you know, not just warehouses, but just spaces that weren't being used during lockdown and they couldn't really make it work. And so we've met with several and kind of seen these spaces and and see if we can either come, well, two things, come up with, you know, commercial terms that work, but also if it's something that could work in terms of storage, is it not a risk for any items or et cetera? So that's been a very interesting pivot. Like, how do we uh, make sure that we have a standard protocol in terms of checking out a space, looking for certain things? What are the commercial terms? Because it'll always change. And so that's been a very exciting part. You know, now there's so many people with space who are looking to become a part of the Cajon, I guess, network. And so it's been 
addressing that, kind of getting them on the Akohan network so that we can do what we do best. And that's really generating the demand and, and servicing the people. You used the word network earlier before we started. We were using the, the term um, ecosystem. You are not yeah. just uh, helping customers, but in this pandemic, indeed, any crisis turns into an opportunity. So I'd say the suppliers, should I say that? Rick? The yes. space suppliers, suppliers yeah. right? So you're yes. now really bridging, just like Alibaba, just like uh, yeah. Grab or any other uh, big uh, big uh, in-betweens there or a, a, a middleman there. You're now bridging the customer, whether B2C or B2B, with the space uh, suppliers. Um, right, and yeah. and I, I know you really have to make a lot of adjustments there. It's all part of the learning process, you know, uh, four years in the business. Hi, this is Louis Banta, CEO and Chief Consultant of LJMB or Learning Just Made Better. Thanks for watching my video. To get more videos like this, click subscribe and hit the bell icon below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and share this to others.